Hi, my name is William. Uh, today I teach uh, American literature. Uh, as usual, each class, 15 minutes, uh, we cover one section. So today, we are still in chapter 3, literature in the 19th century. 3.5, Emerson, 104. So that means uh, we are going to spend uh, four classes on Emerson. Every week we'll have four classes. So that means this entire week we will study Emerson. Of course, Emerson uh, is an important uh, literary figure in American literature. First, uh, we look at uh, Emerson's life story. One, he was born in 1803 and died in 1882, uh, around 80 years. He was born in Massachusetts, completely English ancestry. We know that Massachusetts is New England. His father died when he was seven. He was raised by his mother and by the help of other women. Uh, you know, uh, every word, every type of word on the smart board or white screen, I want you to, to take notes, unless that is uh, the text from, uh, of literature, which you can just uh, copy and paste uh, on the internet. But my writing, every word, you are supposed to write down on your notebook. Next, uh, two, in 1817, he went to Harvard College and uh, was appointed as the first man messenger for the President dealing with the delinquent students. He, I mean, he deal with those uh, in our daily language, those uh, students who need the discipline, and then he reported to the faculty. He liked reading, of course. He maintained a list of his uh, read books and write his journal called Wild World. He took outside jobs, including being a waiter and a teacher. Uh, he teach uh, his relatives. So anyway, he, by doing that, he get uh, money to support his education. Any questions on the first page? Are we good at those here? All right, now let's uh, go to the next page. Three, in 1826, faced with poor health, he went to South Carolina, but still failed to cope there. He went farther south to Florida. I have been to South Carolina. Uh, in the summer, it does not feel quite cold in the summer, but 
I suppose it's still quite cold in, in winter in South Carolina. Of course, that, uh, Florida is like uh, the south tip of America. Florida, I want to say it's really hot. Like you, I remember when I was in uh, Florida, I feel that the climate is uh, even like um, uh, Middle East, like uh, Iraq. Emerson took a long walk on the beach of Florida and began writing poetry. He met Prince Murat and become companies. That means they are, those two are good friends. They discuss religion, philosophy, and government, etc. Basically, they discuss about everything under the sun, right? Uh, you know, this, I believe this uh, friend of Emerson, Prince Murat, has uh, important uh, influence on him because we, we know that uh, literature writing, all right, it's a uh, often involve uh, uh, a different perspectives. Uh, different people will have different uh, opinions. Then put together, make uh, a text interesting, right? So here, Emerson's life exper experience with uh, Prince Murat. It truly, I believe that truly help Emerson to have some uh, sense of uh, uh, literature writing. Any questions on that or comments? Next, four, Emerson's brother and his first wife died in their twenties. So that's a means they are truly quite young, then they die. Uh, I th think that's also an important reason that uh, Emerson, he, you know, everyone is love. Emerson also uh, is love and feels the love. Uh, since his uh, uh, Close relatives died in early age. Uh, Emerson, you know, uh, have attention to other things uh, like the nature, which we will say, right, in the later. In his twenties, Emerson became a pastor in Boston, uh, making uh, twelve hundred dollars a year. Well, that means one month is a hundred dollars. But at that time, that a month, a okay, hundred dollars a month, in 1830s, that's actually huge money at that time. I believe uh, uh, no one here in this uh, uh, Mankato University has uh, that much money, right? Then, of course, Emerson, uh, I mean, you think about uh, a person who has right reading, usually uh, will have uh, his own idea, even on everything, right? Emerson disagree with the church. And he resigned after serving the church in Boston for three years. You know, I have a friend who is a Christian. Uh, uh, I mean, they often told me that uh, uh, the place that gives them the most hurt is not a place outside the church, but inside the church. So, I mean, you do, do not uh, 
mistakenly think that uh, if they are Christian, then they must be good friends. No, sometimes they, you know, they may hurt each other. Any questions or comments on this page? Are we good as notes here? All right. He returned to Massachusetts. He made a lecture in Boston, the uses of uh, natural history. So here, I believe this number six, his tour in Europe has important influence on Emerson. Because you can see he met uh, three important uh, literature artists, right? What was Courage and the Carlyle? What was is a poet, the same as Courage. A Carlyle write uh, uh, prose, right? So his tour in Europe is not uh, like other people just sightseeing, right? Take pictures. Use, well, at that time, no cell phone, no camera, but his tour traveled to Europe truly have the es essence of uh, exploring the literature world, you know, see how other great uh, literature artists are doing, right? Then in next one, in 1835, he married his second wife, Lydia. And they have uh, three or four children. Amazon was able to have enough income to support his family. You know, this uh, 1835 is in, in Emerson's 30s. He was born in 1803, right? I mean, usually we go through the life story of uh, the literary artist quickly, and then our focus uh, was mainly on the writings or literature. Any questions on this page? Suppose no questions. I mean, if my class have questions, then I will answer them, all right? So since uh, here, I'm the only one, so uh, no questions now. Um, are we good as notes here? Oh, somebody is still writing. All right. It's, uh, while you are writing, I may say, uh, the following week uh, will be some winter storm. So we may expect uh, one day of this world will be cancel classes. All right, uh, are we good at the notes here? Let's go to the next page. Round two, Emerson's literary 
literature. 1. 1836, his first essay, literature, published. Right. So here, uh, this page is uh, the first part. I divide this into four parts. I mean, I might not include every sentence in this uh, of this essay, but uh, most of this essay will be on my uh, white screen. Okay. You don't have to write down, but uh, you should keep a notebook of a word document. You find this uh, uh, text on the internet later, then you copy and paste this text onto your word document. Then you will have a complete notes, right? Of course, I mean you have time. I mean in class, if you like to write this down as a other words on the white screen, go ahead, right? So, we are going to look at this uh, later, uh, sentence by sentence. So this is the first part of nature. Nature is, a, I want to say, like a milestone in American literature. Also, a my, of course, a milestone in Amazon's life as well. And we know this is in his 30s. First sentence, to go into solitude, a man needs to retire as much from his chamber as from society. So basically, what does this mean? It means uh, it's not easy for a person to get solitude and uh, to get solitude. That person should uh, retire from his chamber. Chamber, you may understand that at home, okay? And uh, also from society. Okay, you imagine now we just uh, you forget about your home, your apartment, and also forget about the school. Then you may have some sort of solitude, right? Okay, next. What can you get when you have solitude? Well, here it is. I'm not solitary while I read and write. The robot is with me. So this means, uh, this sentence means uh, even nobody is around you and you are right and read, you do not feel the solitude, right? How to feel solitude? The first sentence says, you know, you must forget your home and also your society. That means your working place, right? Then the next sentence, but if a man would be alone, let him do as he starts. So, the third sentence tells us how can a person to be alone? You know, you, because uh, in the beginning you talk about uh, how to get solitude. You for forget your home, forget your working place. Well, but that's not some concrete, right? Then the third sentence tell you a concrete way to get solitude. That is to look at the stars, of course, at night, right? You, in daytime, you cannot find a, a star, right? Only at night. So, then what happens when you look at the stars at night? How can that help you to get solitude? Well, here it is. The next sentence. The rays that come from those heavenly words will separate between him
were separate between him and the what he touches. So the ray that come from the heavenly works, heavenly works. That means the sky, right? The ray, of course, that's from the stars. Was separate between him and what he touches. What he touches again is the word that person lives in, right? So the rays from the star separate that person from that person's world, right? Separate him from his home, his working place, right? Next, one might think the atmosphere was made transparent with this design to give man in the heavenly bodies the perpetual presence of this sublime. So this, well, this is a long sentence, right? We notice that uh, usually Emerson's sentence is not long, okay? Why? Because he is a poet. We know poetry, you know, a single line, right? One sentence, a single line, does not run, usually does not run to this next line, right? Only one line. So, you can tell by reading Emerson's writing, you know, he is pretty terse, right? He uses, uh, you may say, at least we may say comparatively short sentence in literature, right? If you read uh, other authors like uh, uh, Jan Austin, right? Uh, sometimes that one sentence may run uh, half a page, right? But Emerson's sentence is truly just uh, one line or two, right? Truly like a poet. This sentence, I mean, is compared already three lines, already comparatively long in Emerson's writing. And one might think the atmosphere was made transparent with this design. So, again, this sentence means basically this person is free from any disturbance and feel the atmosphere is transparent. Nothing between that person and the star ray, right? And then the perpetual presence of the sublime. The, that means when he looks at this, the starry sky, the ray, only, and then the, the man, he would feel the entire universe is something sublime, and that it lasts forever. You know, that's truly the sense of beauty of this universe, right? Well, if you haven't tried that, I mean, you may, at the night, go outside, right? And then look at the sky, and see the light from the star shining, right? Blinking. I mean, at that time, depends on your own feeling, you know. You may think of many of your own life experience, or you may just like uh, Emerson here says, you know, forget about everything at that time, and only the, I want to say here to be a world should be superb of that universe, and then the person, right? Next sentence. Seen in the streets of cities, how great they are. So here, what does this mean? Seen in the streets of cities, that means, uh, you know, human, when you look at the stars, the rays, 
you are still live on this human world, right? So, often you start in the street, in the streets of cities, right? Just like uh, other humans, the cities may have, uh, you know, sidewalk, the road, excuse me, the road, the restaurant, right? The school, right? Those um, daily life things, but those daily life things at that time does not prevent us from appreciate uh, the beauty of the universe, right? Then how good they are, you know? This sentence means although the person is still living his daily life, standing on the usual street of a common city, but at that moment, he got solitude, and then he can feel the universe is truly great. That's his first paragraph, you know. That is the significance of one getting the solitude, right? You know, people engage in the daily life. You know, you have your, I may say, your trouble or duty at home, your trouble or duty as living place, I mean, as the working place, at school, at factory, right? But once you get that solitude, right, you can feel how beauty the universe is, right? But if you cannot get the solitude, you may just feel, wow, our daily life is truly horrible, right? We have trouble at home, at school, at working place, you know? Where is the beauty of this world, right? Well, Amazon gave us a, a way. That is, you know, you look at those uh, stars at night, and the rays from this star, usually to me, is like white light from the star, right? Then by looking at those rays, you should get solitude. And once you get solitude, you should feel the superb of this universe. That is, you know, I want to say that is the essence why this writing is, is titled Nature. And the questions on this, or comments on this, right? I mean, this is still, I mean, now is the 21st century, this is the 19th century, right? Like uh, almost 200 years later. But this writing is still classic and uh, out of, out of standing, right? them word by word because you can find this from the internet and then just copy and paste to your Word document. Word document is also a part of, of your notes, right? You combine your writing and that Word document, then you will have a complete notes for my course Amer American Literature. All right, now let's go to the next page. Later, this page is two or four. Okay? We plan to display four pages. Uh, Amazon's great writing nature. So this is the second page on my right screen, of course. 
If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would man believe and adore and preserve for many generations the remembrance of the city of God? which had been shown. So this says that uh, if the stars or those wonderful rays only appear one night in a thousand years, how would man believe and adore and preserve for many generations? the remembrance of the city of God. Basically that this shows uh, if this ray from the star only appear one night in a thousand years, how come human remember its beauty for generations, right? This just means, uh, you know, such a beauty. Some people would think such a beauty might just appear one night in a thousand years because it's truly, uh, you know, truly beneficial to human. Maybe this uh, chance is very precious. That uh, some people would think that only appear one time in a thousand years, right? The next sentence, but every night come out those envoys of beauty and uh, lights the universe with their admonishing smile. Now here, this sentence says, well, some people would think such a wonderful time only come one night in a thousand years, but such wonderful time come every night, right? And those invoice of beauty, those that means the, the white ray from those stars, right? And then light the universe with their admonishing smile. This word, I want to say, admonishing. And then smile, you know, this is something contradiction, right? Smile usually, usually means something good, right? You smile, you smile to the customer if you work uh, in a, a retail s store, right? Uh, you smile to the people around you, right? That's something good. But then, admonish that often means uh, we want people to not do something, right? That means uh, admonition. Usually have some negative meaning. Then you say here, smile is some po positive meaning. Then admonition is uh, some negative meaning. Then this put together on this super beauty of the universe. You want to think about this, why? And the answer is uh, in the previous text, right? Smile, of course, here means the, the beauty of the universe, that's the smile, right? Then admonishing, this word, that means uh, human, often get buried by their daily life, including their home, their living uh, place, their working place, right? Then, the light from the this, from this star cure those disease or illness of human. That means human shouldn't be buried by their daily life, right? They should look at the sky, find the beauty of the universe. Any questions on this uh, 
uh, power button. Now we move to the next one. The stars awaken a certain reverence because though always present, they are inaccessible, inaccessible. But all natural objects make a kindred impression when the mind is open to their influence. So here, it says, they start awakening a certain reverence. Right? The reverence means dignity, right? Respect. Why? Because uh, although you, it's present, that means you can look at them, it's uh, visible, right? But they are inaccessible, you cannot reach the star, you can just look at them. Then, so this, the star, has a sense of reverence or respect, right? Next. But all natural objects make a kindred impression. All natural objects make a kindred impression. Here, when the mind is open to their influence, what does um, this mean? This means uh, if human's mind is open, to the influence of the nature, then the nature, all natural objects make a kindred impression. Kindred means intimate. Now that means this nature uh, objects can be, you know, the scenery in our nature, the river, the mountain, the hills, the valley, the forest, the grass, right? Or the fish, or the cows, the pigs, right? All nature objects make, uh, let people feel intimate when people are open to the nature's influence, right? So this sentence, is absolutely correct or right. Because once human, you feel those uh, nature objects or nature sceneries has uh, beneficial on human, of course, you will feel intimate. You would regard those nature objects as your friends, right? That's what this means, right? On the other hand, if a, a human uh, does not feel that nature objects, like the hills, the valleys, the mountain, benefit human's life, then that person may just feel terrible, right? You <laughs> like uh, if it's the mountain, sometimes if you, I mean, from modern society, uh, they technologies may cause uh, sometimes more problems, right? Like, uh, for example, those vehicles, right? Now, when you say, when I say the mountain, I, I truly often feel worried because, uh, you know, if you drive a vehicle along the hill or mountain, you know, you truly do not want to have any accident, right? In the plain area, you know, it's all right, you drive. Uh, even if you end up in a ditch, it's not quite dangerous, right? So this kind of thinking, like t today, with uh, modern technology, the vehicle, you do not feel much uh, oftentimes, okay? depends on how you think. 
You may not feel that mountain is your friend, right? When you're driving a car, right? You may feel nervous on your approach that mountain, right? But here, Emerson's writing is, a, as I said, absolutely right, right? If your mind is truly open to their influence, this word open, you want to think about why you should feel open, right? You want to ask yourself, human should open to what? Or what things should human be open to? I mean, if uh, some, for example, if somebody, okay, you do not like or you feel nervous about that person and uh, that person want to approach you, and uh, like uh, get your phone number, why you would you give that person your phone number? If you if you give, that means uh, you are about open to that person, right? But if you do not give your phone number to that person, you are like a kind of close to that person, right? So here, this word open. That means human would think. Those nat natural objects are good, are beneficial to human. That's why the mind is open, right? So this sentence says, if human feel the benefit of nature, then human would feel nature is the Friends, right? And then this large objects include the stars, right? All the stars are not reachable, right? A human would still think that star, a part of nature objects, is beneficial to human. Why? Was just like the previous text says, by look at the sky, you get what? Solitude. And the, by solitude, you can sense the beauty of the universe, right? So, how to achieve that? Then humans should have an open heart to nature. How human can have an open heart to nature? Human should feel that nature is beneficial to them, right? That's the logic. The last sentence, nature never wears a mean appearance, right? The last sentence says, you know, this is like a, a poetry line, right? Nature. This is also associated with the previous sentence, right? Human's man open to nature, why? Nature is uh, beautiful and ben beneficial, right? Then here, nature never appear a mean appearance, right? So that's about uh, the first part of uh, Emerson's literature. I want to say when you read literature, you truly do not want to read uh, too quickly. You should read like what I did, sentence by sentence, even word by word, right? If you uh, want to say the reading speed to have good comprehension of uh, literature. I want to say, you want to cover just uh, 10 pages in half an hour, right? 10 pages in half an hour. If you read faster than that, some people may say, oh, uh, in half an hour, I can read 30 pages. Well, you probably read too fast. Then you truly, will lose a good understanding of those good literature. 
Any questions or comments on this page? Okay, here is uh, our ever class last page, the homework. Homework, part one, read the textbook and the notes for every sentence. Of course, the notes is the words on my right screen. Two, think how it is written and have a dream you can write your own literature someday in the future. Huh? Especially, you want to think about uh, how a text, a literature text, is written. For example, Emerson's literature. After you read it, you should realize that uh, Emerson's sentence is truly not none at all, right? Often just uh, one or two lines. This is uh, uh, associated with is being a poet, right? And also you can sense Emerson's writing has a clear logic. Okay? One element after another, like a, a, a chain, right? All right. So much for today's class. Have a nice day.